say how be ya Gee, but I'm glad to see a pal house tricks What's new? Love thy neighbor And you will find your labor A great deal easier Life will be breezier If you love thy neighbor Hello, love. <laughs> Don't you hello love me. <laughs> Something wrong? To be ashamed of yourself. Oh, why? What have I done? What time did you crawl home this morning? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. What time have you got to bed? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was about half past. It was quarter to three. Well, did I wake you up? I should think you woke the old street up, standing on the steps, shouting and swearing. Yes, well, it, I couldn't get the front door open. No, I'm not surprised you were using the back door key. <laughs> oh, I'm shattered. I do feel bad. Good. Serves you right. How you got up those stairs, I'll never know. No, neither will I. <laughs> Do you know you are in the bathroom for nearly two hours? Two hours? I thought you'd fallen down the hole. <laughs> I lay there worried stiff, trying to go and look. And when I did, I wish I hadn't bothered. Why? Well, what was I doing? Sitting on the toilet, fast asleep. <laughs> I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't sitting there when I woke up. No, of course you weren't. Cos I dragged you off, undressed you and put you to bed. Oh, very nice, my love. Thank you very much. Wish I'd left you where you were. Did I try anything? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, was I a bit fruity? You must be joking. Didn't have the strength to raise an eyebrow. <laughs> but what did I do then? As soon as you read it, the pillar, you started groaning. Up your sight, said never again, and were probably sick all over me carpet. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I was, a, I was a bit merry, you see. Mary is the last thing you were. <laughs> Suppose you want your breakfast. <laughs> I don't think I can stand food this morning. I'll just have a cup of tea, thank you. Whatever made you get into such a state? Well, we, we were having a party for Clarky the foreman. Clark? I didn't think you liked him. I can't bloody stand him. <laughs> Why were you having a party for him? Well, he's leaving, you see. Who's the new foreman, then? I don't know, love. The, the boss hasn't made his mind up yet. Why don't you put him for it? Me? Me become foreman? Why not? Because it, it would be throwing away my heritage, casting aside all I believe in, betraying my brother workers on the shop floor. Eddie, I'm asking you to consider being a foreman, not chairman of the Tory party. <laughs> It's the thin end of the wedge, love. There are them and there are us. I am us and foreman of the like are them. That's right, and them earns more money than us. <laughs> Joan, the subject is closed. I thought it might be. Perhaps Bill will put in for the foreman's job. What are about? They wouldn't give that job to a nignog. <laughs> Just racial discrimination. It's got nothing to do with him being black. Then why can't he be foreman? He hasn't got the brain. Why not? <laughs> because he's black. <laughs> Eddie, you're making no sense. Joan, the subject is closed. <laughs> it's prunes and plums, love. Prunes and plums? Yes. You take a big, fat, juicy plum and you dehydrate <laughs> it. What have you got? You've got a shriveled, wrinkled up prune. It's just the same with these sambos. All those, all those centuries spent in the hot jungle sun has dehydrated their brains. They've got prune brains, we've got plum brains. Yes, and if you ask me, yours is stewed. 
Joel, the, the subject, subject is closed. closed. Get to work, I suppose, and see what I can do to push up productivity. Oh, I shouldn't have thought you were in any fit state for work. You look as if you need a good rest. No, look, that's fair. It's my duty to go in and clock on as long as I've got strength to pull that handle. <laughs> and I can have a nice little rest on the firm stand. <laughs> hello, love. Don't you hello, love me. Hello, Joan. Hello. How's Bill? Oh, he looks worse than Eddie and nearly as pale. <laughs> Well, don't you blame me. He told me he'd say when he'd had enough. By the time he'd had enough, he couldn't speak and you couldn't hear. Yes, well, I'll... I'll see you tonight, love. Oh, never again. I know exactly how you feel. Oh, I was so mad with Bill last night. What did he do? Well, after I got him into bed, he started to get sexy. <laughs> snuggling up and nibbling my ear. <laughs> There was nothing to get mad about. Oh, yes, it was. In the first place, I wasn't in the mood. And in the second place, by the time he got me in the mood, he was fast asleep. <laughs> All right, lads, come in. Come All right? Yes. Anybody in? <laughs> the executive toilet is all clear. Good. Hey, you know, they've got fitted carpets in the executive toilet. Yeah, and proper paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, 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 just a minute, lads. Are ah, we not forgetting something? What about the early warning system? Hey, I nearly forgot about that. Yes. Oh. We don't want old Granger catching us at it, do we? No. There we are, it's all right now. Yeah, good. Right then, let's see what's going on in the world today. <laughs> Hello? TUC leaders to meet at number 10. Oh. Royal family goes to Windsor. <laughs> Raquel Welsh reveals all. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's fantastic. Look at that, Arthur. Oh, I couldn't look at that, put me off my work. Yeah. <laughs> it's put me off my wife, I'll tell you. Hey, oh, come out! Oh, hi, Eddie. Stop! Now it's you. All right, that's come on, it's all fair. Oh. How many times have I got to tell you? Shout when you come here so I know who it is. I don't know the password. Well, shout your name. Say it's me, Sambo. <laughs> Look, I tell you, my name is not Sambo, right? <laughs> Now, where were we, lads? Looking at Raquel Welch. Yeah, never mind, though. We've got more important things than Raquel Welch. <laughs> hey, prices are going up again. It's inflation, Arthur. You see, it's all right, East Grumbling, that increased wages puts up prices. The only way to beat inflation is to increase production. Oh, you're dead right there, yeah. Eddie. It's about so we'll have to get our fingers out. We will, yes, exactly. Here, here. <laughs> It's only by achieving a substantial growth per capita in the gross national product over and above the increase in the cost of living index that we can put all to this inflationary spiral. Hello, is he watching Panorama again? <laughs> it's in paper. Do you know that stuff like that in the Beano? It's not the Beano. All right. <laughs> Be that as it may. It's the politicians who drop us in it and it's up to us to pull us out. Rubbish. I beg your pardon? He said rubbish. You're talking a load of rubbish. And what do you know about the workers? You're a conservative closet. And you're a labour loudmouth. <laughs> what? Labour loudmouth. You make me sick, Eddie. You go on about increased productivity and all you do is to sit on your big fat white honky backside. I don't... Sit on your big fat I wish you too much. Look, don't get shirt, but that's fine because Bill's upset you. Yeah? We're only trying to tell. Well, don't. Oh, come on, Jack. We've got some work to do. Yeah, right. Oh. <coughs> hey, are you coming? No, I'm not. I haven't finished my fat yet. Oh, come on. Oh, typical, isn't it? Now what you want about? Look, if you're so keen on productivity, why don't go and do some work? Work? Yeah, yeah. You remember the only four-letter word you never use? <laughs> Listen here, mate. I do as much work as anybody in this place. Then what are you doing sitting here skiving? I'm not skiving. I'm merely exercising my right to use the toilet. Man, but all you do is to sit here and smoke. Of course I am, because I don't want to go. <laughs> if I did want to go under the Factories Act, I'm allowed to do so. Matter of fact, I went at home before I came out. Then you have no right to be sitting here, have you? Oh, yes, I am. Just because I didn't choose to hang on till I got here doesn't mean I should <laughs> give up my right to get in the toilet. You know, one of these days, Eddie, the boss is going to find you out and he's going to have your guts for garters. Ah, don't you worry about me. 
I'm not frightened of old Granger. I'll tell you what, you'd have to get up bloody early to catch any booze. Eddie! Oh. oh, I want it in the office. Me? Yeah, the, the boss wants to see you. Did, did he say what for? No, no, no. Perhaps this is one of the mornings he got up earlier. <laughs> Granger, Mr. Booth's outside to see you. Ah, yes, Mr. Booth, our pet troublemaker. He is rather a thorn in your side. Well, that situation is about to be remedied. Are you going to sack him? No, promote him. Promote him? Yes, Miss Bailey. He's not likely to cause any more trouble for the management if he's part of it. Send him in. You can come in now, Mr. Booth. <laughs> you uh, wanted to see me, Mr. Granger? Oh, yes, Booth. I've been keeping an eye on you. Oh, have you? And I've been having one or two thoughts about your future. Oh, dear. I think it's time we had a serious talk. <clears throat> Sit down. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, before we go on, can I say there were mitigating circumstances? I beg your pardon? Well, you see, Joan, the wife, she hadn't been very well, and I had to stay up all night looking after her. So I overslept, and Jacko thought he was doing me a good turn by clocking me in. That's very interesting. It only happened the once, sir. Is that all? Well, once or twice. Uh, once or twice? <laughs> all right, it was every day that week. But, but don't worry, I'll make the time up. I won't go to the toilet for a month. <laughs> Thank you for the confession. Confession, didn't you know then? No, the matter I wish to discuss is far more important than time stealing. Sit down. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Granger, don't worry. I'll bring them back. What do you mean? The two chairs from the canteen. <laughs> How many have you got? Uh, just two. You see, we had that spell of warm weather and we had nothing to sit on in the garden. <laughs> so I thought I'd just borrow two chairs from the canteen. So I said to Joan, the wife, I said, Joan, these are only borrowed. They must go back by winter time. <laughs> I think, Booth, I ought to tell you the reason I sent for you before you incriminate yourself any further. Sit down. Yes, uh, yes sir. As you probably know, our foreman, Mr. Clark, has left. Yes, thank God. Big problem. <laughs> We're all very sorry to see him go, sir. I'm sure. Well, uh, I'd like you to take the job on. Yeah. Pardon? I'd like you to be the foreman. I'm sorry, Mr. Granger. I thought I heard you say you'd like me to be foreman. I did. Well, I can't accept the job as foreman. <coughs> Why not? Because it's against my principles. I belong to the Brotherhood of Labour. Can't expect me to become a, an informer, a management lackey. <laughs> I'm one of the lads. It'll mean having your own key to the executive toilet. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, sorry. Fine. And two pounds a week more in your pay packet. Typical, typical. The capitalist answer to everything, money. You think every man has his price. Well, let me tell you this. You can't buy any booze for a paltry two pounds a week. All right, three. When do I start? Hello, Tim. Oh, hello, Barbie. I'm just putting the kettle on. Oh, good. Oh, mm. El Flamenco. Fine old Spanish sherry bottled in Birmingham. <laughs> I've got it in the supermarket. Made from the finest selected grapes and matured in the cask. Sounds marvellous. How much was it? 24p. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all? What's it taste like? Do you want to find out? Well, love, I don't usually drink during the day. Well, no one would know, yeah? Besides, we could drink to Eddie's promotion. To form an Eddie. Looks all right, doesn't it? I can't grumble at the price. It was on the special offer. Four p off with three tins of cat food. <laughs> but, John, you haven't got a cat. <laughs> if I ever get one, I'll have the food in. <laughs> <Cheers>. <laughs> What do you think? I'm not sure. Neither am I. Have another one. <laughs> I'm glad Eddie's getting on. So am I. Extra money will come in useful. I'll be able to get some new curtains for that living room. Well, what colour were you thinking of? Nigger brown. <laughs> <laughs> I do beg your pardon. That's all right, Joan. I don't mind. It's not all right. Shouldn't use expressions like that. Don't say Chinese yellow or Indian red, do we? Joan, honestly, I said forget it. I don't mind. Well, I do. I'll give you my word. I will never say Nicker Brown again. <laughs> I've said it a 
again. <laughs> Does Eddie like being the foreman? Loves it. Changed his whole way of life. How do you mean? Well, he's wearing a collar and tie around the house. He's ordered of the Financial Times and the Observer. <laughs> Last night on the television, he watched Panorama. <laughs> that doesn't sound like Eddie. I'm telling you, Barbie, he's a different man. In future, there were no more loitering in the loo. Oh, I see. Where would you like us to loiter? <laughs> You've come here to work. Now, I know some of you sneak in here for a crafty fact. You ought to. You've done it often enough. Are you talking to me, Reynolds? That's right, Booth. Mr. Boo, if you don't mind, let's have some respect for the coat. Excuse me, Mr. Booth. Hi, Jacko. What have you done? Yeah. Done nothing. I was going to say, we are allowed to come in here to wash our hands. Yes, but only if they're dirty. And from now on, there'll be a hand inspection to make sure they're dirty enough to require washing. Hey, you're going to have one hell of a problem with my... <laughs> This man like a little Hitler. <laughs> I'm merely trying to cut out time wasting. Look, we've wasted ten minutes already <laughs> listening to you rabbiting on. Don't worry, you'll be back at your machine soon enough. And when you get back there, make sure you stay there. Uh, yes, Reynolds. Permission to speak, mine for her. <laughs> hey, under this new regime, are we allowed to use these here facilities when nature calls, or do we have to give you three days' notice? <laughs> There's no need to be sarcastic. Nobody's denying you the right to use the loo in moderation. But once a day should be enough for anybody. <laughs> and anybody wishing to go a second time must produce a doctor's note. It's all gone. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> Wasn't bad, was it? Uh, very pleasant. <laughs> We should do this again. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> well, you've got hiccups. So have I. <laughs> I'll get you a drink of water. How are you going to anything stronger? <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> oh, that sounds a nicer cure. <laughs> We've got it in for medicinal purposes. Oh, that's what I need it for. <laughs> I'll have one with you. You haven't got the hiccups. <laughs> Prevention is better than cure. <laughs> yes, Miss Bailey. I think the tide has turned for Granger's engineering. Oh, I'm glad, Mr. Granger. <coughs> Best day's work I ever did, making Booth the fallen. The fall has been removed. Well, Oh, yes, of course, I see what you mean. Yes, we've solved what could have been a ticklish problem. We've gained a foreman, and the workers have lost a leader. Two birds. Pardon? With one stone. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Go in. Look, uh, could I have a word with you, Mr. Granger? Well, certainly. That'll be all, Miss Bailey. Uh, um, uh, Reynolds. Oh, yes, of course. Afraid you're all the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> Workers, that is, not blacks. <laughs> now, um, what do you want? It's about Eddie Booth. Yes, I know what you're about to say. I realise that I've deprived the men of a leader. But I'll be frank with you, Rollins. Reynolds. Eddie Booth was a troublemaker, and that presented me with a problem. I'm afraid you've got yourself another problem. What do you mean? Meet the new troublemaker. <laughs> I beg your pardon? On behalf of the men, I have to tell you, until Eddie Booth is demoted, we are going on strike. What's he done? Everything. This is not a factory. It's more like a forced labor camp. In addition to roll calls, loo rotor, and machine inspection, we now have Booth greater productivity plan. What the devil's that? No smoking in tea breaks, no late nights, and no sex. <laughs> Only at weekends. The man's got berserk. But the job's gone to the man's head. And until we have a new foreman, we are all going on strike. But you can't do that. It's unofficial. According to the Act, there's got to be a cooling-off period. In that case, while we're on strike, you cool off. <laughs> Miss Bailey! Well, that devil's booth! <laughs> booth! Are you in there? Booth! 
You want to see me, Mr. Granger? <laughs> if it's not too inconvenient. No, 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 I'm just having a look around. I've never been in the executive before. It's very nice, carpets and everything. How long have you been in there? Oh, just a couple of minutes, sir. Are you sure? Well, it could have been 10 or 15. <laughs> well, while you've been hibernating the executive toilet, we've got trouble. Trouble? What sort of trouble? I've just been talking to Reynolds, and the factory's gone on strike. Dear yes, sir, wish you'd let me handle these sambos. They're very easy to take offence, nignogs. <laughs> what did you say to upset him? You stupid I idiot! Well, no one you've upset him. <laughs> Oh, go round calling people stupid idiots. I'm referring to you, Booth. Pardon? You're the stupid idiot that's got us into this mess. Well, from now on, you're no longer foreman. You can think yourself lucky you've still got a job at all. And I can promise you this, Booth, as long as I run this factory, you will never, I repeat, never hold any executive position again. As long as I live, from now on, you're back on the floor. You realise what that means? Yes. I won't be able to use the executive toilet. <laughs> It's all gone too. Oh, what a shame. We've got some port left from Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home, love. Oh, it's here. Oh, hey, Bill. Oh, dear Lord. What have you been drinking? I don't know. But we're off the port next. <laughs> oh, hi, Barbie. I've been oh, looking for you, baby. Oh, it's Bill. Oh, hey, Bill. Oh, it's Bill. Oh, oh, it's Bill. Oh, hey, hey, oh. Oh. We had been celebrating, huh? Eddie's promotion. <laughs> it's Foreman. Your little ex-foreman. Ex? Yes, I've resigned. Hey, that's not what I heard. Well, that's what I'm telling you. I only took the job to discover more about the devious ways of management. And you keep your big black mouth shut. <laughs> what a pity we're nothing to celebrate. Oh, yes, we have. We're going to celebrate my return to the shop floor. That's a good idea. Oh, yes, please! Uh, uh, you've had enough, Barbie. They both had enough. Anyway, it's only enough for one here. <laughs> Cheers, good help. <laughs> what sort of port is that? Oh dear. <laughs> That's the wine my mother made. <laughs> Your mother can't make port. No, that's the bottle she used. That's not port wine. Well, well, what the hell is it then? Herbal laxative. <laughs> You got the early warning system in operation? Oh, aye, the bucket's behind the door. Good. I've seen Eddie this morning. Where is he? We <laughs> 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 were just talking about you. <laughs> no, I heard you. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Using the loo in the firm's time. Hey, we always thought you went at home. <laughs> I've been at home twice. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> Oh, hello, Eddie. Oh, like you again, is it? All right, let's come on, all clear. <coughs> oh. How many times have I told you, when you come in here, shout your name, shout me, Sambo? Hey, how many times have I told you that my name is not Sambo? Well, you know what I mean, shout something, then. OK, then in future I'll say this is me, Bill. Yeah, that's better. The new foreman. <laughs> <laughs> I got the job this morning, you know. Bloody no. <laughs> and I've made a few rules. No reading in the toilet. No smoking in the toilet. And call me Sir! Oh, my God.